In my paper titled Twelfth Night, Costuming Against the Status Quo, costuming plays a major role in the romantic comedy Twelfth Night, written by William Shakespeare. In this written script, the costumes worn by the characters are as significant as the written words for both the meaning and the enjoyment of the play. The costumes create confusion and become an outlet for trickery and mockery going against the status quo of Elizabethan fashion declarations. Through a close reading of Twelfth Night and research using a variety of credible sources, it is evident that trickery was used through costuming to help drive the play. The thesis statement Costuming in Shakespeare's Twelfth Night defied the status quo of fashion during the 17th century, London, challenging gender identity and hierarchy, will be defined through a focus on 12th century fashion, critical theories of gender and social class, and specifically two characters, Viola that cross-dresses and Malvolio that wears cross-guarded yellow stockings. Shakespeare's costume choice to intentionally dress Viola and Malvolio that opposed the laws of the time period was a genius way to portray the interrelated themes of love, gender, betrayal, hierarchy, and foolishness. The characters' costumes in Twelfth Night highlighted critical theories in both gender and hierarchy. These critical theories aim to take a closer look at social norms and challenge the behavioral norms. The expected fashion etiquette became a presumption of political correctness. Costuming takes on a major role by depicting qualities of gender and status. All of the female roles were performed by men, so it was a commonplace for costumes to have a large impact on the believability of female characters. While the audience was comfortable with this delusion, Shakespeare pushed the boundaries of gender expectations in this play on multiple occasions. The Elizabethan era was considered to be the golden age of England, as it was a period of peace, prosperity, and flourishing arts. During this era, led by Queen Elizabeth I, clothing and fashion was very complex, detailed, and expected. In fact, it was so important that Queen Elizabeth I issued many proclamations about clothing. This edict from 1574 details the colors and fabrics people could wear according to their social rank. Clothing was a sign of status, and those that disobeyed the law suffered consequences, including fines, prison, and loss of status. Clothing was a visible and outward marker of proper social hierarchy. Historians claim that Shakespeare wrote Twelfth Night around the year 1601. The Elizabethan era is well known as a time of thriving theater and famous for the written works created by William Shakespeare. Some people even refer to this time as Shakespeare's London. In Twelfth Night, costuming allowed Shakespeare to express sexuality and feelings that did not fit into gender norms or the status quo. As gender norms were challenged, hierarchy and expectations among social classes were defied as well. Elizabethans were not allowed to wear whatever they liked. It did not matter how wealthy they were. The color, fabric, and material of their clothes were dictated by their status or position, and this was enforced by English law. Shakespeare challenged these norms by dressing characters in costumes that disregarded and ridiculed the laws about clothing. Shakespeare's play, Twelfth Night, allowed the audience comical relief when it came to fashion rules of this time. Spectators could show off their own inappropriately dressy outfits, but when not watching each other, they could enjoy the spectacle of mere common players dressed up as lords and kings. Shakespeare obviously took advantage of these rules to produce the play simply by starting with an all-male cast that played the role of both males and females. Costuming played a huge part in being able to pull this off, and Shakespeare took this to a new level with characters like Viola and Malvolio. An understanding of the costuming in this play allows for the actors to properly portray their characters as well as to entertain and challenge the audience. Shakespeare used costuming 
as a form of trickery to mock both gender norms and social norms. One example of trickery is evident when Viola, a female being portrayed by a male actor, assumes the costuming and acting of a male to take on the identity of Cesario. Some people even refer to this play as a transvestite comedy. This use of clothing is used to trick others in the play. After surviving a shipwreck, Viola asks the captain to help her change her identity. In Act 1, Scene 2, Shakespeare writes, Conceal me what I am, and be my aid, for such disguise has happily shall become the form of my intent. I'll serve this suit. Thou shalt present me in an image to him. A second example of trickery is evident through the character of Malvolio. He becomes a walking symbol of trickery and mockery as he makes an appearance in cross-gartered yellowed stockings. There is evidence that Shakespeare uses the costuming of cross-gartered yellow stockings to mock the fashion rules between social classes. The fact that Malvolio was foolish enough to wear them in front of Olivia solidified that he was a ludicrous and alarming fashion hybrid sober steward above the waist. The costume was simply repulsive. Dressed in this confusing manner, he was dreaming of becoming of noble rank. Another quote that the play found in Act 2, Scene 5, is, To be Count Malvolio, there is example for it. The lady of the starchy married the Yemen of the wardrobe. Having been three months married to her, sitting in my state, calling my officers about me in my branched velvet gown, having come from a daybed where I have left Olivia sleeping. Olivia declared him to be a crazy madman and had him locked up, rather than the clothing raising him up in the social classes. Instead, his yellow stockings communicate subservience and embarrassment. His willingness to dress so inappropriately with no regards to the social class rules for clothing left him shamed, tricked, and in jail. The character Viola, a noble young woman, assumes the clothing and identity of Cesario to portray herself as a male servant to the Duke. She disguises herself as a male by wearing clothes fashioned after her brother and falls in love with Oshino while disguised as a male. She is unable to confess her love for him because he thinks she is a man. In the meantime, Olivia, who Orshino is in love with, falls in love with Cesario, who is really Viola disguised as a man. The use of transvestism and costuming, along with performance, creates both status and gender confusion among the characters. It challenges the players and the audience to question their desires and proves that clothing creates a visible outward appearance that is judged by others and affects oneself. This takes her down in the ranks of social classes. The cross-dressing of Viola to take on the male identity of Cesario confronts the audience with the relationship between fashion and gender identity. She disguises herself as a man to console herself when she thought she had lost her brother, to survive in a new land, and to earn her way into the noble household. The costuming empowers her, but also becomes quite problematic as a love triangle forms between characters that are not aware of Viola Cesario's born gender. The character Malvolio tries to climb up the ranks of hierarchy as this steward gets tricked into wearing cross-gartered yellow stockings to impress Olivia who is above his social class. Mavoli gets tricked into a fashion taboo by Sir Toby, Sir Andrew, Maria, and Fabian. Using Mavolio's promptuous attitude against him, these four characters play a practical joke on him by planting a letter that they know he will find and read. The letter tricks him into thinking that Olivia, a beautiful, wealthy, and noble woman, way above his social class, is in love with him. Malvolio follows the directions in the letter that orders him to wear yellow stockings that are cross-guarded and to act rudely to Sir Thomas and the servants, all while keeping a jolly smile on his face. It was absurd that Malvolio would fall for something so out of line regarding fashion in his social class, but like a fool, he does. 
Malvolio's cross-guarded yellow stockings ultimately lands him in a submissive female role, doing even further damage in lowering his social class, just the opposite of what he was trying to achieve. Shakespeare used costuming to defy the status quo of the Elizabethan era to drive the meaning and enjoyment of his play, Twelfth Night. The costuming was part of the script, not an afterthought or left up to costume designers when staging the play. Each article of clothing had a meaning that was understood and made a mockery of during this time era. It was refreshing that transvestism and gender dysphoria was enjoyed by the audience without causing an upheaval of an offended population. During this time period, the theater offered an escape from the reality of the real world. The audience was challenged to question if altering clothing or going against the laws related to fashion would actually be able to change their gender identity and or social status. Ultimately, then, Shakespeare raises questions about human identity and whether such classifications as gender and class status are fixed entities or can be fanged with a simple shift of wardrobe. In the end, Viola reveals her born female identity and goes on to live a happy life. Malvolio is released from prison and angered with embarrassment, but in true Malvolio style, he carries on confident with himself that he is sane. Costuming, gender identity, and hierarchy are magnificently woven together by Shakespeare in Twelfth Night to interchange and challenge the status quo. The final slide is a list of the citations from all the sources that I use to help guide my research. Thank you for your attention, and if you have any questions or would like to discuss my research or paper in further depth, please feel free to reach out.